you know, at the end of the Villanova game, I was watching Dorka try to move, and she didn't look like she was hobbling. I don't know if what kind of treatment she got in the 36 hours between games, but it couldn't, it, it had to hurt, and for her to do what she did tonight, what does that say about her? Well, Dorka's kind of been, you know, beat up since, uh, you know, September. She hasn't been 100% since September. And sometimes it's worse than others. And, um, you know, she hardly ever practices. So, uh, you know, I think after Friday, you know, um, I just think she had a better matchup tonight too, you know, where she, you know, she had somebody that she needed to guard in the low post and then have to chase people around the perimeter. So I just think it was a better better matchup all the way around and she just looked better you know felt better and looked better and played a whole lot better with Aaliyah also responding after having not much of an impact on Wednesday what did you see from her tonight to get off on a better foot you know I, I told some I told these guys our, our post players you know they, they'd all be averaging 20 if they just made half their layups right the uncontested ones especially you know, um, and and I said the hard part's getting those, and they usually come if you work really hard on offensive rebounding. So in the Villanova game, we had two offensive rebounds. I think one by Kristen and one by Nika. That's embarrassing, right? So, you know, I think they took that to heart, and you know, we we worked really, really, really hard and won the rebound battle tonight. You know, against the team that was. You know, obviously not easy to rebound against. Um, but Aaliyah can, Aaliyah can impact the game like she did tonight, every game. She just has to choose to. She just has to get herself ready to. And hopefully she can give us something like tonight every night. We're going to need it again on Sunday. <clears throat> Gina, was, was there a lack of size the reason that you just pounded the ball down inside there and, and drove into the lane so much or did you just want to get your post players going um, I think it was a matter of um, you know last time we played them you know they hurt us a lot inside you know their, their big kid really had a field day against us and I thought that the um, best way to counter that was to go at her and make her play defense them both the pros players so we wanted to start the game and do do that as much as we could you know and uh, and and they and and those two work great together Gina do you see Aaliyah being in a place where she can impact a stretch of games like she started to around this time last year she was really so key for you guys down the stretch last year yeah well that's the you know that's what you plan for you know and that's what's that's what's unbelievably frustrating is you know you don't get the same kids showing up every night you know so all your plans go to go to waste you know so um yeah if you go if you can go into every game going this is what we're going to get from Malia and that doesn't have to be 20 every night but if we know we're going to get double figures you know and she's going to play great defense and get 10 rebounds, whatever the case may be, and just have an impact defensively. Yeah, that makes us that makes us a different team, especially the teams we're going to have to beat, you know, later on in the season for sure. You know, when uh, you do lose a game like the other night, uh, do you make it a point of emphasis that, you know, we haven't lost back-to-back -back games in whatever, just 29 years, I guess. Is that something that you stress with them? Don't be the first to do that. No, no. They would have lost a long time ago if I did that. They would be scared shitless. Um, no, 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 no. I, I don't think I've ever brought that up. Ever. I didn't. I, you know, I never bring. I never brought up the win streak in the conference. Never brought up. You know, when we were going through that 111 thing, I never counted for them. Um, you know, we just came to practice yesterday, and and uh, all we talked about was how bad our effort was Friday night and how Villanova outplayed us in every phase of the game, every, 
every, you know, from coaching down to the managers. They were better than us at everything. And uh, we just needed to turn that around. And it had nothing, no mention at all of the other stuff, you know. Um, I don't like to mention it around Jamel anyway because she was on that team, and she says that if she would have started, we wouldn't have lost two in a row. So I'd never bring it up when she, you know, especially when she's around. Do you have a certain MO for bouncing back from a loss or coaching after a loss? It used to be the guys were pissed. That was the number one reason. You know, uh, we had, we had, uh, you know, we had established a culture here where um, l losing became uh, kind of like I don't even want to, I don't even know how to describe it. It was just something that just was totally out of the realm of possibility that we're just not going to lose. And that when we did lose, I think the players were, if we ever did lose, they were genuinely in, uh, I never had to say anything because the practices the next day were some of the most intense practices I've ever seen in my life after every loss. And then the game after that was usually one of our best games. You know, anymore, I don't know if that's still the case, but I know for ever many years, 20 some years, however long it's been, you know, guys take losing really hard in Connecticut. I hope that never goes away. Gino, uh, Jim Clark from Women's Hoops World. Um, you kind of slid by it and you said, yeah, we try to kind of uh, charged into the lane. I think we probably saw more drives into the lane in this game than any five more five others. How did you make that happen? How did you finally get across to them that they could do that? Well, <clears throat> the way, uh, first of all, the way that Paul guarded us, it gave us opportunities to get to the rim. Right? They were so aggressive on the perimeter. So aggressive. Um, so there were opportunities to go. The second part is, you know, we played four guards a lot. So that means that one of their big guys sometimes was caught on one of our guards. So we just made that a, a concerted effort that the more they press against us, the more we need to go by them. And then, you know, it was a set, a couple really set plays that I wanted to get Kristen going. And I felt that she could beat her man and get into the lane and finish. And she did, you know. Hey. The, um, truth is fleeting, you know. It's, it's, it's out there someplace. And every once in a while, it lands on you. Huh. What do you want me to tell you? Today, just, you know, there were opportunities there. And we... Um, we kind of stressed the opportunities today. Uh, Gino, it's, it's been eight weeks since, since Paige's surgery. Um, she's still in a, in a brace uh, during the game. How close is she? Are you confident she'll be able to play at all this, this season? Um, what's the, the status update on her? You know, she has the brace <clears throat> for a reason. Um, but she, she's been doing more and more things every day. So she's running more. She's um, doing more basketball stuff on the court. But it just doesn't involve a lot of cutting. So it's more just standstill or just moving this way. There's not a lot of this. So each and every day there's something that, you know, we try to add. What does that mean? Well, there's been no setbacks. So if everything goes, you know, I asked her yesterday, I said, when are you going to play? And she said, when I'm, um, when I'm ready. I said, when are you going to be ready? She said, I'll let you know when I'm ready. You know, athletes know their own bodies, you know. They know when they're ready. You know, I mean, 
she could say, I'm ready. And the doctor say, no, you're not. Or the doctor could say, you're ready to go. And she'll go, no, I'm not. You know, each, each individual, you know, they know their body. So, do I think she's going to play this year? I do. I do. I do. I, do. I really do. I'm not just hoping either. I, I, I think she's going to play. Do you know I assume Caroline and Olivia remain day to day? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, the, 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 one, of the, one of the bad things about having a game every other day is, you, you know, you don't get a chance to get healthy. You know, there's, you know, after the Sunday, yeah, we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then we play Friday. It's the first stretch, you know, that we've had in a month and a half where we, we've had that. So um, we'll come out tomorrow, see how they feel. Then uh, Sunday at shoot-around, we'll see how they feel. And then we'll go from there. Can you talk about your defensive effort to hold the Paul to 60? Yeah, you know, they're not an easy team to defend, you know. And they helped a little bit. You know, they didn't shoot the ball great, but they shoot from the three-point line. Seven for 31. So, yeah, they're, they go on these streaks, you know, where they'll make eight or nine in a row. Um, so, yeah, we played great defense, and they helped by missing. And then we helped – by rebounding the ball and not giving them second, third, and fourth opportunities. Um, I, I, told, I told the kids, I told the team, I thought this was as good a game as we played at both ends, you know, complete game, you know, throughout the season, up to, up to this point in the season. 